Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and today I'm gonna to show you how I like to trim out my windows and my doors. I've been installing this exact style of window and door trim in my last three houses and this time I added it to the big window in the back of my shop. So whether you're dealing with existing windows with existing trim or brand new windows that you need to trim out, this is a really budget friendly and easy way to trim out your windows that looks really high end. So if you guys are ready to see how easy it is to upscale your window trim, let's go. Installing new window and door trim is one of my favorite ways to upgrade the interior of a home, or in this case, the interior of my workshop. In this video, I'll be showing you how easy this is to do with the help of our video sponsor, The Home Depot. I'm installing this trim on new construction windows and doors, so there wasn't any existing trim here yet. However, I have done this many times on doors and windows with existing trim. If your window already has trim on it, you simply remove it first. You can use a pry bar and a hammer to carefully remove the trim around your window to get it down to the rough 2x4 window frame like you see here. At this point, you can check to see if there are any gaps between your window and the rough framing. You can use some expandable straw foam to fill these in, allow it to dry, and then cut it flush to the window. Before adding any trim, I cleaned my window and removed any residue from the frame. It was pretty filthy. At this point, things get fun, and I grab my materials to start trimming. I used a 1x6 for the window sill, 1x4s for the rest of the frame, some crown molding for the top, and some half round molding to go under the crown. Now, a quick note about your wall thickness. Now, the way that I trim out windows, I like to have a little bit of a ledge here that sticks out a little bit, mostly because I like to put plants in my windows. So with that, it's important to see whether you're working with two by four walls or two by six walls. So this is a two by four wall, so I can fit a one by six here for my window ledge. Now, if you're working with a two by six wall, you might wanna opt for like a one by eight instead. I add the window sill first, so I grab my one by six for this. I measured the inside opening of the rough window frame, so between the two by fours that the window sits inside. Since I'm going to be coming around and trimming out the sides here with a one by four, which is three and a half inches wide, and that'll be on each side, so three and a half times two is seven. So I'm gonna add seven inches to the inside opening here. And then typically I'll have a little overhang past the one by four. So the overall length of this one by six needs to be your inside opening plus seven inches plus about four inches for overhang on each side. I trim my one by six to this length, then I mark the center of the board. I took the inside opening measurement divided by two and marked this distance on each side of that center line. Then I went back to the window and measured from the front of the window to the front of the drywall in multiple places and took that average. Theoretically, this should be the same across the entire length, but in reality, it rarely is. Using the average seems to work pretty well. I marked this measurement on each end of my one by six and used a square to draw out these marks so that I could see where to cut for the window sill to sit into the window opening. I used a jigsaw to cut along these lines, then tested the fit in the window. You may need to trim and adjust slightly, but once it fits pretty well, it's time to nail it in place. Throughout this project, I relied on my Ryobi Airstrike battery nailers. I ditched my air nailers several years ago because I got tired of dragging the cords and heavy air compressor around. I picked up an Airstrike and I haven't put it down since. I've been using my 18 gauge Airstrike nailer for over four years now and recently added the 16 gauge and the crown stapler to the collection. I really like using the 16 gauge for the door, window, and larger, thicker trim as it has a larger nail so it holds a little stronger. But I like to keep the 18 gauge handy for smaller, more delicate pieces like the crown and half round molding that I'm adding later. And you guys are always telling me to ditch my hand stapler, so you'll be happy to see that I now have a battery stapler and I'll be using it in several upcoming projects, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, I'm grabbing this 16 gauge airstrike to secure this window sill in place. I'll leave the sound on here because I love the sound of nail guns echoing in an empty room. It sounds like construction. Once the window sill was installed, next I moved on to adding the trim around the rest of the inside of this window. 
I cut a 1x4 to the length of the opening at the top. Now, as I mentioned earlier, my walls here are 2x4 studs. If you're working with 2x6 walls, you will likely need a wider board for this, probably a 1x6. Once it was trimmed to length, I measured the distance across the top between the front of the window and the front of the drywall in several places again and took the average. I ripped this board to this width, then nailed it in place. I repeated the same process to install the two pieces on the sides as well. Once the inside of the window was trimmed, I moved on to installing the outside. I usually leave about an eighth of an inch reveal here. So I'll bring my one by four on the side up to about an eighth of an inch from this inside edge. That leaves a little bit of room later to come back and caulk. For the sides, I'm going to measure up to an eighth of an inch past this inside edge of the top piece. That way I'll have an eighth of an inch reveal when I put the top piece on. I measured each side. Theoretically, they should be the same, but in reality, it's likely that they're slightly different, so it's best to cut each side to fit. I installed these so that they were about an eighth of an inch out from the inside edge to leave my reveal. Then I measured across them to find the length for my top and bottom pieces. I cut two 1x4s this length and installed one across the bottom and one across the top. As a note here, it's important when nailing these outside pieces in place to use nails long enough to reach through the board, through the drywall, and into the studs or framing behind it. Since these boards are 3 quarter inches thick and the drywall is a half inch thick, I'm using 2 inch long nails so that about 3 quarter is going into the wood behind the drywall to hold it in place. And on that note, you also want to make sure that you are hitting studs and or headers with your nails. Typically, in most cases, there will be a solid header running across the top of the window, but underneath the window, you can use a stud finder to locate where to drive your nails. Once the outside frame is installed, you can call it quits and leave it as is, but I like to add some detail with crown molding and half round. Turn my miter saw to 45 degrees. So on outside corners, the top is longer than the bottom. So I'm going to set this up here upside down. I want to make sure that this is nice and flush, square sitting in here. It's flat across the back, flat across the bottom. So when I make this cut, my top is going to be longer than my bottom. So that's great. Once the first end of the crown is cut, I flipped it face down and measure the flat part on the back side of the bottom edge and mark the length that I cut for the top 1x4 board. Now for the other side, I'm going to turn this the opposite way. It'll be upside down and I'll make the top on that end longer than the bottom. So that'll be my front piece. It's always best to cut a little long and if it doesn't fit, you can trim it off until it does. I use my 18 gauge airstrike for the crown and with a little shorter nails since this is just being nailed into the 1x4 and doesn't need to actually go into the wall studs. I set the bottom flat edge of the crown molding along the top of the 1x4 and made sure that the ends were flush. Then I nailed it in place. So I cut this small piece the same way with just a 3 quarter inch flat space right here to wrap around the corner. For the end caps, I like to rip off a couple pieces of painter's tape and have them handy. Then I can apply some glue and tape these in place on the ends until the glue dries. I nailed the half round molding along the bottom edge of the top 1x4 here, again using the 18 gauge nailer as the smaller nails are a little bit better on these delicate pieces. I've only ever found these in 8 foot pieces and since my window was so long I ended up having to splice them together in the middle. So this is a 45 degree this way and this is the opposite way so when I put them together here I can just putty over that seam and splice these together and you'll never know. Actually gonna add a little dab of glue right there too so I can kind of glue these together. I also didn't realize that I was standing right in front of the camera here so my bad but I just nailed this other piece in place. The end caps of the half round molding are attached the same way as the crown, one square end and one 45 degree end, three quarter inches long, simply glued and taped in place. While the glue dried, I moved on to trimming out my door. 
Now I trim doors the exact same way as windows, only there's just two sides, a top, and the molding. The inside frame is already there. So I measured from the floor up to the bottom of the top piece of the door frame, then added an eighth of an inch for a reveal. I installed two 1x4s this length on the sides, making sure to get nails secured into both the stud framing and the door framing. Then I measured and cut a 1x4 to run across the top and nailed it in place over the sides. I installed crown and half round molding exactly the same way as the window. Basically, if you can do the window trim, the door trim is a breeze. After the glue dried on the trim, I went back and puttied over the nail holes and around the outside corners of the molding. Then I caulked between the drywall and the trim and between the trim and the windows. So with window and door trim, you've got a lot of like elements going on. So I have vinyl windows and I'm budding wood up to it. And the wood is also being butted up to the sheetrock as well. So where different elements meet each other, it's usually best to caulk. This just seals off any gaps, it makes it look seamless, and it makes for a better paint job. Once the caulk was dry and putty was sanded smooth, I primed the wood. Since it's raw wood, priming will make for a smoother paint coat and help better seal it. Then I applied paint and it was done. I love the difference that trim makes on not only this, but basically any project. I'm planning something fun for this window wall, so while the trim looks nice, I know that the wall is still a work in progress, so just bear with me. If you want to see all of the upcoming projects and videos, be sure to subscribe if you aren't already. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this project, and if you want more details on it or the tools used here, be sure to check out the links in the description. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!